beaten and humiliated, what is the Gentile saying? He is saying, there is no God in Israel, for if there was, he would not allow me to do this to his people. And so the desecration of the Jew is the desecration of the Lord. The exile per se is desecration, for Jewish weakness is desecration. I remember speaking once to a survivor of the Holocaust. He said, the worst thing about Auschwitz was not even that so many Jews died there, but that the Germans laughed at us and they mocked us and they said, well, Jews, where is your God? Let him help you now. That was Chidul Hashem. That was a humiliation not only of the Jew, but of the God of the Jews. And the prophet continues, Therefore say unto the house of Israel. That which I intend to do to bring you back to your land, I do not do for your sake. You don't deserve it. Kim the shame kochi. I do it for my holy name. Them that you desecrated by being among the nations in the exile. Jewish weakness, the fact that over the centuries the Jews trampled upon, spat upon, beaten, gassed, and burned. To those who did that, the message was clear, there is no God. And so, if Jewish weakness is the desecration of God's name, how do we sanctify God's name? By surely by the opposite. By Jewish strength and by Jewish victory. And so he says, The kidashti et shmi hagadol ham chulal magoyim. And I will sanctify my great name, which was desecrated among the nations. The Yadu Agoyim Keni Hashem, and the nations shall know that I am the Lord. How? Bikachivachem Lenechem. When I am sanctified through you, before your very eyes, Vilakachtietchem in Agoyim, I will take you out of the nations. Vikibatsietchem Ikolaratzot, I will gather you in from all the lands and I will return you to your land. The state of Israel was not given to the Jewish people because they deserved it. We are not deserving of it. We are not the kinds of people that God wanted us to be. We are not that holy nation, that special people gave it to us because there was a certain point in history where the Almighty no longer averts his eyes. And where he says, enough, enough of the desecration of my name, enough of people saying, they're mocking me and saying, where is your God? Where is your God, O Israel? Where is our God? Look at him as the soldiers of Israel, the descendants of those Jews who were so beaten and so, and so trampled upon in the ghettos as they now march in the streets of Jerusalem. You think you haven't seen miracles? You think that the age of miracles is gone? We have seen miracles in our days that our ancestors never saw people that for 1900 years driven from its land suffering crusades and inquisitions 
and pogroms in Auschwitz is large and small, returning to its land exactly as the Bible said. You think that's an ordinary thing? You think that that just happens? It never happened to anyone except to the Jewish people, the chosen of God. We win a war in six days. In six days we won a war. Who wins wars in six days? The Almighty made the land in six days, and we took it in six days, and on the seventh we both rested. You think that's an ordinary thing? You think that simply happens? Every day that Israel exists, it exists because of miracles surrounded by 110 million bitter enemies who daily dream of wiping it out and of course they will never wipe it out because the Almighty has called us home and called us to return and please God the next time I see you I don't want it to be in Fort Worth I want you to come and visit me in Jerusalem And they want to take you into the settlements to see the real Israel. To see the settlements that our enemies say should not be there. They will be there and they will multiply by the tens and by the hundreds and by the thousands. And I want you to watch the children. We owe Hitler two million babies and we will repay him with interest <laughs> for Hitler's will come and Hitler's will go but the Jewish people will remain forever when I went to Israel almost 20 years ago I went to Hebron, to Hebron, and I took my then four-year-old son with me. And he had just finished studying that day in the yeshiva, the story of how Abraham was told by God to go out into the night and to look at the stars, and he was asked, can you count the stars? And it was a summer night in, in Hebron. And the sky was ablaze with stars. And I said to him, Benjamin, see, that's how it was that night in this place. And who knows, perhaps you're standing exactly where Abraham stood. And he looked down at his feet, a little child of four. And I thought to myself, praise be the Lord, he is good. Because I've come home to shake hands with Abraham and with my son. And you think there are no miracles? Every day there are miracles. We are partners. You and I. The Jewish people and you. We are partners and we are witnesses to the Lord. And someday... When the nation shall beat their swords into plowshares, there will be a wonderful peace. But until that day, when my enemies have swords, I won't have plowshares. You've taken the first steps in a tremendous journey. And I envy you. I envy you because you are making history. I have no words for Wendell. He is someone who, who will go down in history as having returned the world to its original goal and taken people who have eyes but who could not see and open their eyes. Who had ears that could not listen and open their ears. Uh, 
I want to thank you for being what you are. And I want to tell you, never ever believe that you can reach a certain plateau and stay there.